So like I said, this is a brand new machine. You can see zero hours, or excuse me, zero miles on the odometer. That's showing point nine miles because my son rode it around a little bit when we got home last night. Uh, that's the temperature, it's low. I just started the machine. It's got 0.4 hours on it. This is for service, first service coming up at 100 miles um, or 20 hours. And there's the fuel gauge. I like how it shows you which gear that you're in. Um, now the really, really, really base model of this, which is two wheel drive, does not even have this display on it. It just has dummy lights. So I like how on the base 4x4 they at least gave you a pretty nice uh, instrument cluster there. It was running a little bit rough, but it's smoothing out now. I'm just giving it a moment here to warm up. And I'm going to take it down the road and uh, see what I think of it. First ride. Again, the uh, reverse mechanism is so nice now. You just pull that back and bam, you're in reverse. It's so much easier. I don't know why Honda didn't do that years ago. That's something they should have done a long, long time ago, but this is gonna be really nice. All right, so. <laughs> it is a little bit notchy for sure. I'm trying to, there we go. Trying to go from first to second is a little notchy. I think you probably have to give it a little more throttle. And you gotta lift up with some force too. You can't just baby it. It really wants you to lift up on it firmly. Downshifting is uh, obviously not as difficult to do. It's not so hard to downshift because you're pressing down on it, of course, but the upshift is a little bit stiff and notchy. I think it's probably getting a little bit better already, though. I mean, maybe this thing just needs to break in some, and maybe the fluids just need to warm up. Sometimes warm fluid will help. See, that's, that's better right there. And it's already getting better as the machine warms up. So, maybe that won't be an issue over time. thing I can tell you this thing's got a lot of low-end torque <clears throat> doesn't take much throttle at all to power up some of these hills looks like there's some fallen trees down that way so I better find a different route maybe got some smoke coming out of the machine probably from break-in I don't know if there's like some painted exhaust parts or something maybe that are starting to burn off. I can smell it too. <laughs> it smells hot.
try to ease my way past this log over here without ending up over there. <laughs> no problem, no problem at all. I'll get these spider webs out of the way. little waterfall right here and it's still in two-wheel drive too haven't even switched over to four-wheel drive yet seems to be going along just fine There's the big waterfall right there. That one is so big that we can't go down it. Here, I'll show you. I have to walk slow because this gets really slippery. The moss and everything that grows on here, it makes this rock like walking on ice. Boy, I can really smell that ATV burning off. Whatever it's burning off. See, that's a uh, more substantial waterfall. And uh, I've got some trail cameras down here on this part of the property to try and catch people who dump trash illegally and what have you. And one night, a bunch of kids came down here riding ATVs in the dark, and I guess they didn't know the area. And I saw on the trail camera, one of the kids went off that waterfall like a lawn dart and just head first into it. Thankfully, he was okay. But once I realized he was okay, it was kind of funny, I guess. So yeah, I mean, that's my first shakedown run on this Honda Rancher. And uh, let me talk about a few things I've noticed right off the bat. First of all, you see how narrow the track width is? They've got the tires tucked up under the fenders. I actually really like that because it keeps water and mud and everything from flying up onto the operator. So, you know, I just came through, you know, down the creek. I didn't get a drop of water on my boots or my legs or my arms. I'm just completely dry. So, it might not visually look the best, but it's functional. I like that. Um, something else, when I'm sitting on this machine, so there's a whole lot of machine up here in front of me, but there's not much behind me. So it's like the seating position on this Honda is its just farther back. It's farther away from the front of the machine. I don't really know how to describe it. Like on most ATVs, once you get in the seat, you're kind of in the middle, you know, your, your body is sort of in the middle of the center of gravity, but on this Honda, you're kind of sitting back. So most of your weight is back here and it kind of feels a little weird to me. Um, I guess I'll get used to it like anything else over time, but that's, that's definitely noticeable and it's much different than all the other ATVs that I've been on. So, uh, for sure, that's something that I'll keep an eye on. See if it, you know, once we get 
really out on the trails, off camber stuff and that kind of thing, you know, I'll be interested to see if that makes any difference in how the balance of the machine feels. Um, the engine is super torquey. You know, I'm in the break-in period right now, obviously, so I'm taking it easy on purpose. I'm not going to give it full throttle right now. I'm just kind of, I'm going to follow the instruction manual on this and make sure that I give it a proper break-in. But just at low throttle, the torque on this thing is amazing. You know, I just climbed up out of that little rock garden down there in first gear, no problem at all. Didn't have to give it hardly any torque. I attribute some of that to the fact that I got the foot shift manual transmission. I really believe that the CVT belt machines like the Suzuki's and well, really everything else on the market, you know, you have to give them more throttle to get the same output. And that's one of the things I don't like about the CVT machines. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to get a foot shift machine. And it already feels like I made the right decision because like I said, the torque output is pretty amazing on this, even though it's a small engine and I think they're rated for like 27 horsepower. So it's obviously not a big horsepower machine. The light weight of this machine, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the lightest four wheel drive ATV that you can buy right now. So that lightweight combined with the manual foot shift transmission, you're just putting a lot of power to the ground and you don't have a lot of weight to move around. It makes this thing feel stronger than some of the big bore machines. If you know if that makes any sense, like the power per pound is much nicer on this machine. So early on my first little shakedown ride, I really like it. You know, uh, just in the, I don't know, half mile that I just rode it down here, it feels like that shifter is already loosening up just a little. Like I said, probably has something to do with the fluid warming up too. When I do the first oil change on this, I'm going to put the full synthetic in it because I've heard that can help. Uh, that's my only concern right now. I keep talking about it is that foot shifter, but I think it's going to break in okay. I think it'll be fine. And so far, everything else about this machine, I really like it. You know, that torque's going to be wonderful. Um, and like I said, I just, I just really like it. There's a lot of things about this that are very simple by design, but I think that's the thing that's going to make it, you know, easy to keep on the trails for many years to come. So I think they've got a hit on their hands. I mean, they've been making these for years and years and years. My very first ATV, I'm going to try and find a picture. I think my mother has a picture of me on that thing back in uh, 1986. I got my first ATV. It was a Honda four tracks, 200. And, um, it's kind of funny because here we are in 2021 and there's a lot of things on here that are very similar and bring back memories, you know, about that first machine that I had. So I think I'm really going to enjoy this and like it. Uh, I ordered a winch plate for it. I'm going to go ahead and put a winch on it. That's kind of a must have, you know, later this year when we get closer to snow season, I'll probably get a snow plow for it. Uh, but for now, what I would really like to do is just ride it kind of as is so I can get a good feel for it and compare it to the other machines that I've had, you know, and do a more extensive review on it later. But uh, anyway, what I was saying was they've been making these for a long, long time. And I guess it's like the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. You know, they got a good formula here and they just keep it going. Every so many years, they improve a few little things, but generally they just stick with the program because it works. So, so far so good. I like it. Really, as far as the design of the machine goes, the only thing I really wish it had is a two inch receiver um, receptacle back here, you know, cause it just makes it so much easier to take the one out of your truck and slide it in here when you need to pull a little trailer around the yard or something. And it just opens up more possibilities too. Um, with this, you know, you're kind of limited to what you can do with it. So I do wish they put a two inch receiver on there. There might be an aftermarket solution for that. I don't know, I'll have to look. Now I did, uh, it's a shame they don't give you a spanner wrench. So there's no tools included to adjust your shock preload. But I found that if you get just a big pair of channel lock pliers, you can grab that and turn it pretty easily. So I set this to the softest setting available and I also put the two front shocks on the softest available and it makes it ride really nice. Even though it's a straight axle machine, I mean, just coming down here in those rocks and roots and everything, it didn't jar me around. It didn't feel rough. 
it actually rode pretty well. I'm surprised. I mean, honestly, and I'm not just saying this, I've had nothing but independent rear suspension ATVs in the past. And so far, this does not ride any stiffer or more harsh than those did. You know, I don't really feel or detect any difference in ride quality at all. Now, some people will say uh, that this is better for off-camber situations. I disagree. You know, with the independent rear suspension, obviously, you know, you're going to be able to get better articulation. I've seen it firsthand riding with, you know, groups of people that have had straight axle machines like this. These machines get tipsy quicker than the IRS machines do. You know, IRS machines can kind of go right through some stuff. These will try to turn over on you because that rear axle, you know, if one tire goes up, then the other one's going to respond. If this one goes down or up, the other one's going to respond because they're tied together, obviously. I mean, there's just no way around that. That's the nature of the beast. So if you get into some really, really tough trail conditions, this is probably not ideal. But I don't generally do hardcore stuff anyway. You know, just moderate trails, light trails, enjoyable stuff, kind of like this. So in that regard, this will be fine. It's more durable, more simple, easier to service, tougher. Don't have to worry about CV shafts getting sticks through them and stuff or boots leaking or anything. So this will be fine for me. So just a couple of other little things I'll mention that I've noticed. Uh, like my son, he's got a TRX 250X and of course it has a clutch over here. Now you can still shift it semi-automatically just like the Rancher, but it does have a real clutch handle over here to use if you want to. And I've noticed that that is really nice because it makes shifting um, much smoother. Um, like on this machine, when I go from two to three, three to four, or back down to three, back down to two, you know, if you're not just in perfect conditions, it'll make the machine lunge, you know, and sometimes you can even hear the rear tires slide a little bit as you're shifting gears. With the actual clutch, you can give it more smooth engagement and prevent that from happening. So this is a little bit rougher. Um, so I don't know if that's something that gets better over time or not, but I've noticed that already, you know, shifting this thing is, there's no way around it. It's just rough engagement on each gear. Um, but I do like how you can start this in gear. You can just turn it on, hold the brake, and you can start it even if you're in gear, which is really, really handy if you just need to jump on and go. You don't have to go down to neutral every time like you do on some machines. So that's nice. I do really like that. Yeah, so it's a really beautiful day out here. Uh, we finally got a cold front come through after the remnants of Hurricane Ida were finally gone. We had a cold front come through right after that, cooled the temperatures down quite a bit and the humidity. So it's beautiful out here now. It's like an early indication of fall. And uh, I'm just going to ride around a little bit here on my lunch break. It's one of the nice things about working from home during this COVID shutdown is I'm uh, able to go out on my lunch break and kind of enjoy being outside, you know, instead of being up in the concrete jungle of the city. So I'm going to ride around a little bit more and uh, put another mile or two on this machine. But so far, I love this thing, the Honda Rancher 4x4. Simple, rugged, reliable, and just a lot of fun. There's something to be said for a smaller machine like this. I really think that these can be more enjoyable to ride than those big 800 pound big bore machines. You know, I've ridden some of those and it can be a chore just trying to toss those around and make them do what you want them to do. You know, I, I really kind of enjoy a smaller machine. So I think this is gonna be just fine for me. Hey, um, anyway, I'm gonna get back with it and uh, we'll come back later with a more extensive review on this machine after I get some time on it. But just wanted to show you how nice it is out here and give you a few more initial thoughts on this Honda Rancher. Thanks for watching guys, we'll talk to you later.